This drink, I like it. I know, it's great, right? Another! <laughs> What is going on, everybody? Welcome to a brand new edition of Film on Tap, where we've got the tap that never runs out. And wait, what's that? Guess who's back? Back again. I'm back, bitches. Nancy's back. <laughs> Tell her <laughs> friend. That's oh, wait, right, that. everybody. <laughs> That's right. Nancy is back on the show after her <laughs> short little hiatus. She has been missed, but we are happy to have her back on the program. Nancy, how the fuck have you been? <laughs> okay, give me two seconds. Give me two seconds. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. What's, what's this now? Truly. Ah, uh, truly. <laughs> I'm officially ready to be back. Oh, you had a perfect opportunity for a great joke. Is that actually, is it a truly? It is. Oh, yeah. you could have been like, it's truly great to be back. That uh, would have been perfect. There you go. I and set you get, up and you didn't use it. Unbelievable. Then we get sued. <laughs> do we though? <laughs> no, we do not. No, it was a good hiatus. I needed it. Work was crazy. Life was crazy. I moved as everyone who was yes. watching can see. Yeah, if you're I'm watching, the, it's a treat. You don't yeah. see a piano room anymore. Not in the piano room anymore. <laughs> you know, had to downsize a little from my grand piano days, but here yeah. we are. Her music hasn't been selling the way it used to. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. So yeah, excited to be awesome. back with my truly. Oh, yeah. So today... <laughs> I mean, it's a good show for you to be back on because we got some big things to talk about. We especially have a big trailer to talk about, which literally just hit like a half hour ago. So it's super fresh, yeah, super we, fresh. And we delayed the show. Yeah, so we, we uh, talked about this. Yeah, trailer. we delayed the show so we could talk about this. That's yeah. the dedication that we have. <laughs> um, but before we get into that trailer and the rest of the topics for today's show, we have a piece of movie news to cover, which hit the interwebs the past week, and that is th that Julia Garner, who a lot of people know including myself, from Ozark, who she won m multiple Emmys for because she fucking rules in that show. Um, she has been cast as the new Silver Surfer in the Fantastic Four film that is coming out. Uh, and it's been a very controversial because she's going to be a female Silver Surfer because the internet sucks and makes me want to cry. Um, so we're going to talk about the casting news here. What do we think about her being cast as the Silver Surfer? I know Andres knows m more about the, the comic book character that she'll be playing. So I'll go to Nancy first because she's in my vein <laughs> where the only Silver Surfer I know is from like the <laughs> the 2000, was it 2007 movie? <laughs> yeah, that's the only Silver Surfer that I know. But yeah, right. Nancy, what do you, what do you think? Same. I mean, I don't know this BZ, so it's hard to be like, yeah, totally cool with her. But I feel like they were also like, Silver Surfer with boobs. Yay. <laughs> sure. I don't know. <laughs> and it's great to have you back. <laughs> great to have you. Yeah. Silver Wait, Surfer with it? boobs. Oh, no. I'm getting quick silver and server. So, uh, server. Get your surfer right. <laughs> God. <laughs> I can't talk. Get your silver person correct. Yeah, Jeez. the silver people, you know, are all the same. Just kidding. Um, oh, no, it looks wow. Fine, I guess. Uh, I mean, is this an actual thing in the comic books where there's a female silver surfer? Or is it not a thing? That's what I want to know. No, Andres? it's a thing. Okay, sure, then fine, I guess. Let's so then, like, why is this an issue? That's my thing. It's like, yeah. I saw multiple comic book fans point out that there's been a female iteration of the character, so why are we upset? Like, I don't understand. I it's not like, like this has never been done before. Here's the thing. I don't like when they gender swap for the sake of gender swapping. Even when it is a male to female, you know, you think I would be like, yeah, female lady power but i don't like it when there's no reason for it so the fact that this is actually an established character let's just see how it rides out before we all get an uproar about it mm -hmm. andres yeah so first off uh the casting of um oh my goodness i'm, I'm completely julia blank. garner Julia Garner. I was about to say Jodie Comer, but no, Julia Garner. <laughs> for some reason, here's the thing. Doctor Who fans will know exactly who Julia Garner is. She's the executive producer. She's, she's the one who saved that show along with Russell T. Davies 15 years ago. So when I think Julia Garner, I don't think of, I don't think of this person, but yeah. But I have seen her work in Ozark and she's, she's a fantastic actress. I think yeah. she will definitely do something with this role as well. Um, 
Now, the internet is being very strange with this one because it's like, oh, you can't have a female Silver Surfer. It's like, she's in the comics. And she's also in like the, in an alternate universe with Norrin Rand, who is the Silver Surfer that we all know from that original Fantastic Four movie. But the thing that's, for myself, it's not necessarily a disappointment in the casting of it. It's more just that I don't think that the female iteration of Silver Surfer has as compelling of a backstory as Norrin Rand did. But also at the same time, they could rewrite certain things. And, you know, it all depends on the writing at the end of the day. But what I'm worried about more than anything else is, is this the same case with the Silver Surfer where Kevin Feige just went, there are too many. There are too many white people in this movie, and there are too many guys in this movie. Let's just swap out the characters so that it'll all be a little different. I'm like, I get it, but when you have like pre-established characters that are really famous in this comic book universe, when your brand is trying so hard to make a comeback and you're trying to please the fan base, like. I don't know. I, I I think I would have probably gone maybe one or two more movies before we introduced um, the female Silver Surfer, but we're doing it right off the bat. Personally, I don't have a problem with it, but you know, with with the internet being what it is, you know, I, I find it so so unusual that that um, that Fihi and all the rest of the creative team did not know that this was going to be a divisive thing right off the bat. For me personally, doesn't really matter, but. You know, th- there you I go. Mean, I the internet will always be like, ladies, boo. We don't yeah. want to do yeah. these male characters we had. So dumb. Yeah. I don't particularly mind this casting whatsoever. I think she's a great actress. And it all just depends on whether or not Matt Shankman and Kevin Feige he can really pull this off and really, you know, uh, make this character work in this universe. But also maybe take the Spider-Man route. Maybe we don't need a whole fucking background on this character and just go right into the action, you know? Yeah. I mean, I just don't care. Uh, (laughs) One way or the other? You know, like uh, like I mentioned before, I really don't know much about this character at all. I've only seen this character in like one movie. I haven't read the the comics having to do with the Silver Surfer. So I just know that Julia Garner is a great actress and I'm sure she will elevate whatever material she's given. And I'm excited to see her in a comic book movie. That's really all I can say about it. I mean, I don't really have any other feelings otherwise. I think it's really silly that so many people are getting upset that they have a female Silver Surfer when there's established comic book lore with a female Silver Surfer. And I feel like a lot of people are having problem with the gender swap, and I just think that's so stupid. And yeah, that's just uh, before I blow a casket, I think that's where I will stop. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> where I will yield. Um, but yeah, so... Yeah, Silver Surfer. We'll see what happens. I mean, I'm more curious about the rest of the cast and the other characters and how they're handled. But right. I guess, uh, I guess we have another character entering the fold. But yeah, I mean, the, the, I I will say the one thing I am slightly disappointed with is, or not not necessarily disappointed with, but that we won't see right away. And again, everyone's getting so pissed off at the fact that this is the only iteration of the Silver Surfer that we're going to get, and. They have clarified that this Fantastic Four movie will be in another alternate universe that's not currently in the current MCU timeline. Like, apparently there's going to be some type of, like, multiversal thing that's going on. So Ugh, they are God, setting it up that right. Norrin Rand could uh, could eventually show up at some point. And- Multiverses, they're so hot right now. Oh yeah, yeah. Still I, I just feel like it seemed like such a great idea with the multiverses, but now it's just made things so convoluted and almost, like, so, like... What's the it's word? Spaghetti. Like in, like inconsequential, <laughs> where it just feels like what you're watching like doesn't matter because like there's some alternate universe or you know this yeah. character can come back. You know, just like I feel like there's no the stakes aren't as high anymore because you just feel like anyone yeah. can come back at any time because of the multiverses. Uh, it's just a including movie. Robert Downey Jr. right now, who he just said, "Hey, I'll come back and play Tony Stark any time of the day." It's like no. so 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 it's going to make Endgame's sacrifice mean nothing. But anyway, I hope he doesn't. I hope did either. God. But anyway, let's let's move on to something a little bit more cheerful in a dark, twisted way. And that is <laughs> the new trailer. The first look we've got at Joker Foley Adu, which every time I say the title, I just think of the Fallout Boy album. <laughs> and just that that's just what Absolutely. I think of. But um yeah, so this is our first trailer for the movie, the highly anticipated sequel that hits theaters this October. 
and I feel like we got shown a lot more than I thought we were going to, but we got our first look at the movie here, which is being called a musical. Um, so we get our first glimpse. What do we think about this first teaser trailer? We'll start with you, Andres, this time. What do we think? Oh, me. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, who else? <laughs> <laughs> wasn't expecting it's, like, it. it's a 50-50, my guy. <laughs> You, you were so shocked. You're like, wait, besides Nancy, why would he pick me? Wait, why, would, why would I go first? <laughs> I'm I, always first. Just like the genuine shock and confusion <laughs> made me laugh so hard. You're just like, wait a minute, me? <laughs> You get to go that was so fucking dumb. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. Yeah. Oh. oh my goodness. But oh. yeah, this trailer, oh. I mean, All I right. will say um so far right now it looks like we're we're getting we're getting back in that same universe we're getting back into arkham asylum cool um i'm gonna be completely honest this trailer did nothing for me absolutely nothing (laughs) nothing i mean i mean the 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 that i i was willing to give the movie a chance like i keep in mind also i don't think the original Joker is a masterpiece. Like so many people claim it to be. I think it's kind of a little bit of a muddled mess. I think Todd Phillips is one of the top tier bullshitter director out there that basically will just be like, Oh, well the music was inside Arthur this entire time. And I'm like, you never set that up in that original movie and only in the bathroom, it comes out and you're like, wait, when, when was that set up anywhere before the bathroom sequence? But anyway, um, I, I, I just, I, I'm just not the biggest fan of Todd Phillips. I love the hangover. I love, um, I love Starsky and Hutch. I, I really like old school as well, but anything else he's tried, like war dogs has kind of just been a little bit of a muddled mess. Joker was also, I think a little bit of a mess for me too, tonally and thematically as well. But with this movie so far, I have to take a little bit of an issue with, what seemingly is the portrayal of Harley Quinn in getting rid of the whole dynamic aspect of having Harley be a psychiatrist that, you know, Mm -hmm. someone who is as smart as she is, even she gets looped into this madness with the Joker. And from the trailer, it just kind of seems like she's another one of, she's another one of the, one of the inmates that just gets, I don't know, more, more interested in what the Joker is and in, in terms of like a star fucker type of scenario rather than it Whoa. being. <laughs> yeah. that, that is a take. Okay. That is a take. Uh, <laughs> no, no, but, 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 but you guys see where I'm coming from, where, where, where it just what? feels yeah. like. I just didn't expect that specific phrase to come out of your mouth. That's all. Wow. Yeah. Took me a took me back this is a, a second yeah. yeah i'm getting canceled on this show guys i don't care <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, Ooh, post-work man. andres is a different kind of andres <laughs> yeah but I, I i don't know i don't know I, I the trailer really didn't do much for me i don't know where they're going to be going with the story i think what they're showing me right now it's kind of a it's for me as a as a big fan of harley quinn and loving what that character was before she became, you know, the, the sort of the, the crazy clown princess of crime. And then it's just like, I don't, I really don't know where they're going with this. I mean, the, the production value is certainly there. Um, I'm definitely going to be there to see it because I love being wrong, but so far from this first trailer, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm necessarily on board with it. Okay, Nancy, are you going to swing the other way? Choo choo, let's get on board, bitches. I am totally on board. <laughs> okay. Okay. You're going to swing the other way? She becomes a train. Got it. There we go. On <laughs> That's board. How that works. Hello. Uh, no, I think this looks good, I, which is funny because I actually like the fact if they don't go the way of she's a psychiatrist that gets. Yeah, I actually prefer it. It's different. I yeah. prefer it. It's different. And also, I feel like. Uh, they've tried that. I don't think that's something that audiences want to see. I don't think it's going to be interesting. And the problem with just throwing in bits and pieces of that story is that it's going to be very Suicide Squad-ish where you're just getting these glimpses and it's not something that we're really invested in. So it's almost like pointless to put it in there. Again, it's almost like the going the Spider-Man route where you're not giving this full backstory. It's just like, let's just jump into what it is in this moment. 
Um, and Lady Gaga, from the little glimpses that we saw, I already love her as Harley Quinn. And I also love that this was more, uh, we got a teaser trailer. It wasn't more teaser than trailer, which we get a lot of times with these things. And it's just like, oh, okay, you didn't really show us anything. You show us like a few glimpses here and there of a face and we don't get much. I think this they did a really good job of including multiple scenes in the movie and kind of getting us invested in what they're going to do. And the music aspect of it, uh, it does seem that it's maybe just in their heads, which to me feels like it was set up in the first movie where he mm -hmm. has this whole reality um, that we were watching that was just in his head the whole time. Um, so I think they I think they did a really good job setting up in the first movie if that's the direction that they're going to go. Um, so we'll we'll see. I, I'm still a little iffy on the fact that we didn't actually hear any singing or musical aspect of it. Uh, I'm hoping this is a musical that's not actually a musical, if you know what I mean. So there's certain movies where it's like, I don't know, Hairspray, for example. That's a musical, but it doesn't feel like they're singing every five seconds and it seems secondary to the story. If they do it that way, I'm on board. If it's like a full-blown musical, I don't know. We'll, if it's we'll, we'll see. If it's like Wonka, what do you what would you think? <laughs> okay, here's the weird thing about Wonka. I feel like Wonka only worked because of the music. Because Gene Wilder was so good as Wonka, oh. I feel like if I just watched a movie with just what's his face, Timothy Chalamet, I wouldn't have liked it as much as I did. So if they can somehow replicate that of like being invested because of the music, but not being a shit show, then kudos to them. I feel like they can, they, that would be the way to pull it off. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I feel like maybe out of the three of us, I was the most nervous for this trailer <laughs> just because <laughs> hearing all the reports that it was going to be like a jukebox musical. I was like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What the fuck yeah. are we doing here? I mean, not, it's not like they didn't set up his character to be musical in nature. I mean, especially there's various scenes where he's either dancing or he's kind of, you know, carrying himself as if he's like hearing some melody in his head. And obviously, like Nancy said, like, you know, we watched a movie where he concocted this whole relationship with someone that was completely in his head so like it's not out of the realm you know of possibility that this could all be in his head uh and her head you know as they're kind of ha seeing these musical numbers and performing these musical numbers which i think actually works for the story because that was the thing i was worried about is how was the music going to factor into the story like was it just going to be like there's musical numbers as they get to know each other and fall in love but the fact that it's like in their heads i think it actually works for the story and i like the way that it's visually shown here like it does look like a very like la la land-esque fantasy i mean it looks very la la land mm -hmm. even from like the opening shot like of like the spotlight with the joker at the piano i was like oh they're going full while <laughs> so yeah. i was like i was like oh my god um but visually it looks stunning which i'm not surprised by lauren Schur is becoming one of my like favorite cinematographers out there and this movie looks gorgeous i especially love the last shot of the trailer where she puts the lipstick on the the glass and like it just yeah. kind of like forms into his smile that was genius fucking love that um and it just looks colorful and vibrant in those musical numbers phoenix his performance looks fantastic as like it was in the first movie. I love Lady Gaga, what I'm seeing of her here. And I'm kind of with Nancy on like, yes, I know that in the comics, you know, Harley was a psychiatrist who falls in love with a Joker who's like a patient. And I know a lot of people probably want to see that dynamic, but you know, through all the shows and movies that have done that countless times, you know, like, look, I enjoy that dynamic, but I'm not afraid to kind of stray a little bit and do something a little bit different. I mean, that's what the first Joker film did. You know, it tells you an origin story for the Joker, but there's some things that are different and little things that are like changed. And I like that. So I'm not completely against the fact that she's like a fellow patient. Maybe we don't know. Maybe she has a backstory where she was a psychiatrist, but then became a patient. And that's how they got to know each other. Like it could well, be something like that. When hmm. she does do the smile, she is talking to him on the other side of the yeah. glass. So we don't really yeah. know, you know, the full story there. So it could be that, you know. Yeah, she maybe she, maybe she starts as the psychiatrist and then like eventually becomes like a fellow patient or something. We don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that, yeah. I mean, like, like, again, this is a teaser trailer. So we're assuming a lot of things. Um, 
But other than that, like I, I definitely feel like it, you know, it quelled my worries about the whole musical nature, thankfully. And I just think a lot of the shots in this look just stunning, and like I got chills a couple times. Um, and I really enjoyed the first movie. I really love that first film. And I'm not really a big Todd Phillips guy, like Andres. Like I think he's more miss than hit. Um, and until Joker, like he was on a string of just really terrible movies. And that's why I oh, went yeah. into that movie with such low expectations and was so pleasantly surprised. Um, but I'm looking forward to this one. I think it has the potential to be really strange and out there in a really fun way. And I'm really excited for it. I'm definitely a lot more excited for it than I thought I was going to be, given like what was going into it and what I was hearing. Um, and yeah, as a teaser trailer, I think it really works. I don't know. I'm, I'm excited here. I'm definitely more excited than I am nervous now. Yeah, I think yeah. Uh, I'm hoping this is going to get Gaga on like getting closer and closer to being considered a legitimate actress. You know, well, I, mean, I know she she's won an been, Oscar. Didn't oh, she? I, I think she's yeah. totally legitimate. Yeah, but I'm saying like more so consistently. Oh, wait, or did she lose? I don't remember. I don't think she won an Oscar. No, she, she lost. She, she, she lost, yeah. right? She was nominated for, she was nominated for the for song. Stars more. Yeah, for yeah. Star is Born. She was nominated wasn't she for nom Wasn't she nominated for a performance? I I don't mm. think she was. Let me see. Really? She wasn't remember. nominated for her performance in Star is Born? I don't think so. Fact checking right now. Yeah, please do. <laughs> yeah. That's this is why I'm saying like, I wasn't mean, she? She didn't, I don't know. she didn't win, you know? Oh, yeah, she, okay. No, no, she she was nominated. Yeah, okay. she was nominated for Best yeah. Actress. All right. She I, thought she, I thought she wasn't. I want her to win something. It's yeah, what, okay. What I'm, I'm maybe maybe this will get to. her. You know, I think it'll be kind of poetic if he won for the first Joker film and then she won for the second one. <laughs> yes. I think that would be kind of great. For, you know, Joker just, and Harley get Oscars. So, yeah. She's just so good. She honestly, like. You no, know, she's see, a great actress. Absolutely. Yeah. To see someone who go from such a big pop star to this, like, oh, it's just, I love those kind of stories. And she's so good. And Walking Phoenix, only, only, too. Ugh, so good. Yeah. The only thing is, is I feel like she keeps choosing roles where she has to be both an actress and a singer. And I'm, I really just want to yeah. see her be an actress, you know, like where she doesn't well, have to House sing. Of, at okay. Some point. House of Gucci, say what you want. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, but that, I'm sorry. But that's, not, that's, that's not acting. Okay. Yeah. You no, can bring up House of Gucci all you want. She was fine. She but I mean, good. like, really acting. I mean, like, really she acting. Come on. Good. Father, son, House of Gucci. Come on. Uh, <laughs> Say all you want. She did great for what she was given. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I I want her to have a shot at something else. Let's put it that way. Oh my god, but, that was the first yeah. time I've ever seen someone bring up like, all right, well, let me fight back with House of Gucci. Listen, okay. because, listen, you gotta. Okay, listen. I, I'm gonna tell you a little side story. We were watching fucking CSI. I don't know some some crime show, <laughs> and Vincent D'Onofrio was in it. And Craig was like, man, to see how his acting went from this to, like, actually good acting. I was like, but you also have to remember they're giving these, like, shitty scripts. They want you to overact. And sometimes. Yeah, so House of Gucci. Just, mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> she did well with what she was given. That's all I'm saying. Anyone yeah, else yeah. in that, it would have been a complete fucking shit show. Mm -hmm. She did good for what she got. You know what? It will say that I think Gaga is a fantastic actress as well. And there's yeah. so many other things that have popped up here and there. I, I know a lot of people don't give her credit for American Horror Story, but she was fantastic yeah. in that season. And it, for me, it depends on who is directing. And yeah. again, Todd Phillips is very shaky on my end over here. I, again, yeah. uh, I have my feelings on the first Joker, but if there was a chance for success, this one probably has probably has a pretty decent shot with with Gaga at least. But you know who who knows? I mean, again, I'm willing to see the movie. I'm already I already asked Jen, are we going to go see this in IMAX because they shot it for IMAX? So IMAX. I'm already this movie. Nope. Yeah, <laughs> nope. yeah, th yeah. They th yeah, that's apparent. Like like the they're shooting it in IMAX and then also the um. The budget was escalated to what? Yeah, like I know about the budget being like way more, like way higher. Which, which I will say, um, you see that budget on the screen in the trailer. Like it's like, yeah, okay, all right, all right. Like at first you're like, why is it costing so much? And it's like with all the sets and all the production value and all the dancers in the background. I'm like, 
All right, mm. that's where it's going. All right, I get it. <laughs> yeah, like that one explosion shot. I'm like, yeah, that's probably more expensive than anything in the first movie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> also, I dropped the ball again, damn it. I should have said in the name of the Father, the Son, and the House of Truly. House yeah, of you truly. fucked up again, man. You're over <laughs> too. And you even thought of that one. <laughs> I know. I got to I got to get back on my game, guys. Any more truly. <laughs> But I will say I did I did love the the shots that were kind of callbacks to the first movie in the trailer. Like you get to see them both doing like the Joker dance. Love that. that uh, and then cute. also seeing her do the like the blood smear like he did in the first movie. I was like, yeah. I love that. I'm like, I love those little callbacks. And like I said, she looks fantastic. I think I'm more excited to see her than him because mm -hmm. I know he's gonna be great. But I'm really excited to see what she does with Harley because there's been so many different iterations of Harley that I think she's bringing something new and flavorful to the table. So I'm excited. So we'll see. We'll see. I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic for this one. Yeah, but see. now we're moving on to another sick trailer. So sick, man. So sick. Uh, and that's the trailer for Maxine, which is the third in Ty West's. Uh, I guess horror trilogy that I I haven't seen Pearl I haven't seen X so I'm watching this trailer knowing pretty much nothing about this character um, so I'm going in real fresh uh, and it tells the story of this character who was in those first two films now she's in Hollywood trying to make it as an actress but her past is catching up with her and it kind of becomes this like neo noir kind of film um, there's murdery there's mystery there's intrigue there's Hollywood stuff galore what do we think about this trailer Nancy have you seen the first two movies and are you excited about this one if you have I have seen the first two movies and I really enjoyed them. I will say when I did watch this trailer five minutes ago, uh, <laughs> I was like, ah, like we've already seen this, you know, it's very the same pattern as Pearl. I wasn't very excited. We get me a goth again, which even though I love in the first two movies, just seem repetitive. But then they brought in the fact that they have an actual lot like real serial killer character in the movie and then you see all the hollywood stuff with like the bates motel and all of that that is what got me hooked i was like oh that's so fucking smart um so towards the end i got back on board especially with mia goth i she was just so good in those other two movies so that's what yeah i that is what got me saying yes i'm gonna go see this movie uh so yes yeah, so it was very whirlwind experience watching that trailer i was like fuck okay. this this is dumb i was like oh wait never mind no, i, I would have loved Just to see kidding. that transitional moment where you're like oh fuck this i'm out they see the bates hotel all right, all right. Okay. <laughs> all right and i'm it. back in and i'm just when i thought i was out <laughs> <laughs> all right how about you andres oh as much as i wasn't stoked for joker this trailer the se I mean, so, so far, everything I've seen about this, and I'm right there with you, Nancy, it's kind of like, okay, all right, this looks fine. Wait a minute, this take this is taking place during the Night Stalker killings? Mm -hmm. Fuck yeah, Mia, Mia Goth, Mia Goth in, in sort of a outkill the Night Stalker scenario, I'm so on board with that. And with, with my previous interaction with the series, previous, I hated X the first time I saw it, I don't know. I just I wasn't on board with it for some reason. And then I rewatched it again. And I was like, you know what? I, I really appreciate this a lot more. And then seeing Pearl actually made me enjoy X a little more because Pearl, I think, is a much stronger film. It's a radically different film as well, too, in terms of tone, in terms of just the performance, and in terms of Mia Goth's performance as well, where oh, so she good. is playing she's playing a completely different character to who she plays in X. And it is also a prequel story, and oh uh, god, I, I I really enjoyed Pearl quite a bit. But I will say one thing right now. Oh man, like wait, so sorry, really quick. So is mm -hmm. this supposed to be the same character? Because X X is confusing because it's Mia Goth is a character, but then she also plays a different character who's older, and then in Pearl, she's the younger version of that character. So there's a lot of Mia Goth and different characters. <laughs> so. Yeah. I just want to make sure, is this supposed to be the same character as the one in Pearl? No, it's the same character yes. as the one in X. So real quick, in X, um, Mia Goth is okay. playing two characters. She's playing Jesus one Christ. character as herself. I didn't sign up for this master class. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hold on. I did not Wait, fill out my credit she, card information. Does she not die in X? I don't remember now. Mia Goth's character. 
one of them dies. <laughs> she plays two different characters in that. Wait, she no, plays no, 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 I know. I'm, I'm talking about the the porn version of Mia Goth. She well, di- well, she doesn't well, clearly die. from no, 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 she doesn't die. I mean, it shows in okay. the trailer she's alive and well. <laughs> okay. Because I was like, that happened in the '70s, and we're now in the '80s. Okay, I, my brain is cut up. Go I ahead. feel like you Sorry. both are like the equivalent of that. It's always sunny meme of him at the chalkboard with like all the different strings yep. going for <laughs> <laughs> this is when she was young she's actually playing two characters here but this is the character from the first film but in the third film she's a porn star <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. Like, you like, try to follow that i got my eyes crossed holy shit yeah. but, but 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 tom but tom like if you yeah, i i would honestly recommend you go back and check out those first two movies and honestly if you was if you're gonna if you're gonna watch the movie I would actually recommend you watch Pearl first, first and yeah. then go into X because there's so many plants and payoffs in Pearl that pay off in X and vice versa if you watch them both. But it's 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 literally it's like a one two punch movie for me. Like both of them could both of them stand alone on themselves, but they both complement each other really well. And Maxine looks like it's going down that road as well. I mean, the cast on this is freaking stacked as well. So I'm fully on board with this. I mean, I'm all in for broken nose detective Kevin Bacon, so. Oh, yeah, I forgot about Kevin Bacon. <laughs> yeah, he, like, yeah. popped up, and I was like, is that Kevin? And then he started talking, I was like, I'm in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love Kevin Bacon. Ugh. I'm also, like, on this, like, film noir kind of kick of where I just, like, I'm just, like, eating all that shit up, like, just between, like, shows and movies I've been watching. So, like, this trailer came along, I was like, fuck, man. <laughs> Guess <Yeah>. I'm in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah um as for me um looks pretty cool you know like again i never saw the the first two movies so i was kind of an outlier watching this trailer you know i wasn't really like super amped for it but i do like the setting i like the vibe uh i do like it's got a good sense of humor about itself it definitely makes me intrigued to go watch those first two films to see like how it exactly ties into this one or like what little threads are there um but you know once once, once i saw like the bates motel and that there's this other serial killer going on i was like oh okay this is interesting these interesting little you know things that they're dangling in front of us but uh yeah like i'm intrigued intrigued enough to at least watch those first two films and see if i want to see this new one um yeah it's it's not a bad trailer. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Watch along. <laughs> there you go. I'm totally yeah. down that X one. And Pearl. There you go. Are they even streaming anywhere? Yes. Uh, not yet. Uh-oh. Not. Well, not I definitely Pearl. saw X on streaming, <clears throat> and maybe Pearl. Maybe I paid for it. I don't know. I don't know. It's been what a is bit. life? What is life? <laughs> it's been a bit. Hang on. It's definitely there if you want to pay for it. But probably not. But probably not. Pearl is not available to stream any. Oh, no, it's actually on Paramount Plus. Yep. Paramount Paramount Plus. Pearl's on Paramount Plus, and I believe so is X. There you go. Paramount Plus pulling through. It's got everything. Paramount Plus. They have everything but a usable user interface. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. It's. Yeah. 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 Yeah, ugh, whatever. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> so doesn't look bad. Doesn't look bad. Uh, so we're going to navigate now from trailers into our big movie of the week. This is a movie I've been definitely excited to talk about with you guys, and that is the new Dev Patel-directed action movie Monkey Man, which hit theaters last weekend. It not only is directed by Dev Patel, but it stars Dev Patel in what a lot of people are calling the Indian John Wick, which I honestly, I just hate the fact we're calling it that because it's so much different and it's so its own thing. Uh, and we can thank Jordan Peele for getting this one to the silver screen because originally it was going to be on Netflix, but then Jordan Peele saw it and is like, nah, nah, nah. No, no, not Batman. <laughs> we're, we're gonna put this in here. We are gonna put. <laughs> we are gonna put this in big screens, and I'm glad that he jumped in because it 100 percent is a big screen kind of action film, uh, and it tells a story of a young man whose mother was killed and his home was burned down when he was a young boy, and he wants to get revenge on the people that you know did this to him, the people responsible, especially the man who killed his mom. So he tries to infiltrate this organization from like the bottom up to try to gain access to these people and get his revenge. 
And then, yeah, then you got your revenge action movie starring Dev Patel, the action star now, which I'm so excited to say. So we're going to talk about our general thoughts about the movie first, and then we'll dive into spoilers as we normally do. So if you have not seen Monkey Man yet, you're going to want to avert your eyes or ears, depending if you're watching or listening to this episode. But you have been warned, because if you complain after we've warned you, I will not feel any pity for you. I am so sorry. So then now, fuck you. Exactly. Mm. You, you've heard it here. So Monkey Man, let's start with uh, Andres. What did you think? Oh, sad. Oh, don't fucking do that shit. Now. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> you piece of garbage. <laughs> oh, me, me. <laughs> Why don't you he go buy me. another overpriced he action really figure, you fuck? Me. <laughs> my Batman just came in t- this week, so there you don't we even go. know what side yeah. of the screen it's on, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> don't oh, get him goodness. distracted. Uh, anyway, right. Andres, well, what man. did you what did you think of Monkey Man? I enjoyed Monkey Man. I think, honestly, De- Dev Patel, it shocks me that he doesn't have a bigger career than what he has now. I mean, like, uh, goodness, like his his role in Slumdog Millionaire was fantastic years and years ago. But also just, you know, shout out to the Green Knight as well. And shout oh, out to movie. a couple other, like, like, it shocks me that he doesn't have a bigger career right now. And this to me shows exactly what kind of talent he can do with action as well. Like he's mostly known for like all the more dramatic stuff, but this really does show that he has a true talent, not only for, for like acting in action, but also directing in action as well. Like for this being a directorial debut, he comes off as a pro right off the bat. However, it is, not necessarily a perfect debut, but it is a very strong first showing. I mean, stronger stronger than, than a lot of other directors that have been out there that have done debuts as well. But, like, the action is well shot, and it's very well paced and entertainingly brutal at points as well. Um, but one thing I really love about this is sort of the thematic and the layer of pain and the culture and how that just comes together to deliver a action movie that we have never seen before, not even in the John Wick era or not even in this realm of action movies. Um, it's, it's truly a unique movie. However, it is not perfect because there are a few issues I have with it. The pacing kind of gets off after the second act, uh, a few stories. You literally just said it was paced great. And Thank then, you. Thank you. And then no, you're no, no, like, no, the pacing I gets off. I, like, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. I, like, I saw your face. I'm like, she's thinking exactly what I'm thinking. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> the pacing good or not, Andre? Make up your mind. Yeah. No, I'm saying the action is very well paced. Like, well, you didn't like, say like, the action was very well paced. You said the movie's really well paced. Movie. Okay, so you okay. think the action is well paced, movie not so much. The, the story saying. the story kind of drags at certain points, okay. I think. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, and and it, 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 it does drag after a little bit. And then the thing is, like, it's like, man, what he decided to focus in on kind of was like, man, but I wanted to know more about this. I wanted to know more about, you no know, spoiler alert, I wanted to know more about the monks. I wanted to know more about the training sequence. I wanted more of that more than anything else. But, I, and, and the other thing too, I will say is I kind of got sick of the shaky cam after a little bit, but overall, it's still a very enjoyable movie. I really enjoyed the hell out of it. I think anybody who is even somewhat of a fan of action owes it to themselves to go see this in a big screen. Okay, Nancy, what is your take yeah. on Monkey Man? This movie was great. I loved it. Div Patel is fantastic. I will agree. It does lull in certain points, um, but you lull. know the fact that he's <laughs> the fact Sorry, that I he... don't know. I don't know. It's late. I'm fucking tired. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just gonna make noises. It's bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's what uh, happens when we record on a weeknight, guys. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Uh, but. The fact that he directed this, he starred in it, he wrote it, yes? He co-wrote it. Yeah, he co-wrote it. Close enough. Uh, The fact that he did all those things, you know, and there are still very few qualms I have with the movie, just that it lulled a little bit, says a lot. Because that's, you know, your your first time directing and doing all those things, it's just fantastic. And he did such a good job, such an action star. And the thing that I love about Dev Patel is that he does do movies that have social commentary in them. Uh, you know, I think he's very smart in that way. Not all of them, 
Uh, but even like Last Airbender, that was a shit show. You could still say that still has some social commentary in there. So not I his think fault, he, though. yeah, not his fault. Uh, mm-hmm. So I, I do think he is smart with those choices, and he wants to say something with his movies that I absolutely love. The action was fucking fantastic. Uh, the directing uh, in some of the action sequences was almost like pretty. The last action mm-hmm. sequence. Uh, the way it was shot and then also the music that they used just made it very different from a lot of action sequences that I've seen. Um, so, yeah, I think calling it an Indian John Wick is very reductive for this movie. Uh, there's a lot more to the story and a lot more like important things that I think he's trying to say. Uh, and that's really the biggest thing that I think he brought to the table with this. Um, he did. Uh, I just it was so good. Again, not without flaws, but very, very good movie. Yeah, um, I was super excited for this movie, and I'm so happy it did not disappoint. I'm so happy for Dev Patel. I mean, especially after learning all the freaking chaos behind the scenes for this movie. Oh, I mean, just did like, you hear? Just, did you hear I've the heard story everything. about his broke his broken hand? <laughs> yep, yep. Like crazy. Bro- yeah. Broke his hand filming the first fight scene in the movie. They so put a I screw in it. <laughs> I didn't know that until after I watched the movie, and they showed clips of it. I was like, oh shit, he's fighting with one hand. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. the fuck does that? yeah. Like, and they said him. if if he put more than like two pounds of pressure on it, that it like it would Gone. get too bent where they wouldn't be able to take the screw out. Die. But I love the fact that like they made like T-shirts with the X-ray of his hand. And then like they said, like, you know, the screw that saved the movie or whatever. And then yeah. they had, like, all the- <laughs> I was like, that's amazing. Um, But like there's so what many other things that happened to him. But like it's just like he overcame so much chaos and so many setbacks and he made the movie he wanted to make. And not only that, but. It's a good freaking movie. I mean, for a debut film, this is such a confident, passionate movie where like you just you feel how much he cares about this material, how much he cares about the culture that he's infusing into this material, first and foremost, which just it hits you right away like a ton of bricks in the best way possible. And I like that this isn't just like an empty revenge movie, like it has something to say. And I think Dev Patel not only shows his directing chops, but again, his acting chops, because he emotionally grounds this movie so well, where I loved his performance. I mean, there were a couple moments that he had me tearing up where I just thought he was so powerful and how he was delivering the material or just moments in silence where he's got all this built up anger that he just you know that moment where he's like screaming in the mirror before he like is gonna try for the first time to get his revenge in the club i just amazing little moments like that um but he just sells the shit out of this you know that i mean you can compare it to john wick all you want but emotionally much more powerful than john wick okay like john wick his dog gets killed everyone can get behind him getting revenge for that but keanu reeves didn't exactly give the emotional gravitas that i think dev patel gives in this movie where i feel like it was much better fleshed out you know if we're going to compare you know the emotionalities of both these movies but i really loved his performance the action sequences i think are phenomenal uh i mean i think this is shaky cam done right i will say there are times where it gets a little nauseating where times where it was a little hard Mm -hmm. to tell what was going on where i was like okay we definitely need to kind of fine tune this for your next movie. But I do think for the most part, the shaky cam works really well, especially for like what I call the uncut gem section of the film, where it starts with him trying to get his revenge and everything goes wrong. And he's getting like chased out of a building. Yeah. He's fighting his way out. He There's this huge car oh, chase so and everything. Mad. And, and I just thought that whole, whole sequence, that whole <laughs> sequence was just incredible and so well done and so well filmed. And that's where the shaky cam I thought worked perfectly. I mean, the, Violence is brutal. I mean, there's one bit with an axe that's incredible that like I yeah. think was a huge crowd pleasing moment that I thought was so good. Um, and I just felt like he really made the camera movements really propulsive and really like dynamic where like you felt like there was an actual person making thoughtful decisions behind the camera. It wasn't someone just setting up a camera saying action and hoping for the best and you know, for his action movie. Like it's just a really passionately made movie and it made me really happy. There are some issues I have with it. I do agree about the pacing. There is a section of the movie that I feel like really kind of screeches to a halt for a little bit, where I think after that big action sequence early on, I feel like it really slows down for a little while. And I feel like that's where it kind of loses its steam, but then it builds it back up for what I think is a killer climax that is so well done and so immaculately filmed. I mean, just some really cool creative choices in that last act. But um, really the the only issue I have with it is I love the social commentary. I just don't think he followed through on it, especially in the ending, which I felt like was very abrupt and kind of like anticlimactic. Like it was missing that like one last bit of like an emotional punch 
because they like set up, you know, you know, these people like rebelling and kind of taking back power and they were basically doing that. But there was no like kind of confirmation of that of like, OK, we won. OK, you know, our people won that sort of thing where it gave that emotional punch that I wanted. It's just like, oh, he got his revenge and then he seemingly died, you know, like so that I don't know. It just it wasn't like the big banger of an ending that I wanted. Yeah, but I think also um, it wasn't just him getting revenge because the the person he kills at the end isn't the guy that essentially did the actual murdering of his mother. It was the um, guy who was trying to be in political power and like doing all these, you know, behind the scenes things to gain political power. Oh, he was power. still pulling the strings. I mean, he was there when his yeah. mom was killed. <laughs> right, but I'm just saying, I think that it was like, uh, let me get to the final boss kind of thing of just like, okay, yeah. if he's dead, then there's going to be a lot of other things that fall out of place in terms of the politics and the, you know, things going on there. So I feel like maybe that's why, but also maybe another movie. I don't know. Um, no, I kind of felt like something must have been cut. Like, I do feel like there are mm-hmm. moments where I feel like some stuff was left out. Um, because I don't know, in my mind, I don't know why I pictured this, but I was like, okay, if he dies, I, you know, he makes peace. He sees his mom and in, in that vision, which I thought was really well done. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like, you know, cuts to black and the movie ends. But in my mind, I was like, you know, I kind of envisioned, you know, the, uh, the people he was staying with who, you know, helped train him. Like they find him, they, you know, they put the, like the monkey mask on him and they almost like carry him out as this like entity. And they kind of almost have him like crowd surf and stuff. And there's chanting and stuff. I don't know. I picture crowd something surf. like that. I don't know. You know, like where they're kind of like holding <laughs> him up like this, like icon. <laughs> To them. Wrap up. I yeah, just something yeah. like that where it's like really drives home that like, yeah, he yeah. made peace with himself. He got the revenge he wanted, but he also like helped these people gain back power from the people who were taking advantage of them and treating them like shit. And I felt like that would have been great. I don't know. That was just my take. But but honestly, like the thing is, is that um that that to me feels more like a Hollywood Hollywood ending. Whereas the thing is, this movie is taking place entirely from his perspective. So the I I tend to think that he actually died at the very end. So no, like, he, I feel like he definitely did. I think yeah. he did, and I think that the moment that it, it was less about everything coming together for all the people around him, and it was more of an emotional catharsis for himself that he finally did what he set out to do all those years ago when he saw his mom get killed. But mm-hmm. which also, by the way, that is a brutal scene when yeah. you see when you when you see what happens to his hands. I was like, oh, my yeah. God. But like, I, I had all these scenarios picturing up in my head leading yeah. up to the moment. I was like, oh, my God, that's even more devastating <laughs> than I thought it was going to be. Did but, you guys catch the Bobby thing before it actually zoomed in on the bleach? No. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, as soon as they said Bobby, I like caught it, and I was like, "Yeah." And then they like really the showed movie. it in a close up later. I was like, "Yeah, I didn't need that." Yeah. <laughs> I loved but, but it I, though. I love the fact that that that's what it came from. Yeah, that no. that's where it came from. But also that that they were like, I love the fact that they were using that in in the movie when it's set up when he's getting the job at the uh, hotel and the restaurant for the first time. That that's what they used to. Um, not only clean the dishes, but they use that to bleach the toilets. They use that for like pretty much everything that you should not use like a cleaning agent for. And it, it just it just drove further home to me just the fact that these people do not care about any of their any of the people that are around them. They don't even care about the people that are serving them, which also, by the way, that woman, uh, I, I forget what her name is in the film, but the 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 sort of the the plot. Yeah right off the bat you're just like oh my god this is a repugnant piece of garbage human being and she's like looking at all the photos of all the women that she's trafficked and all this other stuff and then she's just like oh god so despicable that when it gets to that ending you're just like yeah everyone in my audience cheered when she finally got her comeuppance at the very end but yeah no that that i thought was a great was a better villain than our actual villain, if that makes any sense. Yeah, because, the other guy just seemed like a kind of cliche villain. Of just yeah. like, nothing really much to him. Just like some guy who he just, he's going to beat up eventually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, but, but overall, I kind of feel that there was, like, he had all the pieces there. And some sometimes certain things did come together. But I think for an emotional climax for the character himself, 
I think it all worked well enough. And, you know, yeah. it might not be as satisfying as, you know, some other movies out there have been or in terms of other revenge flicks. But I think for this one kind of making its own stance and kind of making its own mark in the action genre, if you will, with, you know, just with all the commentary that they're saying with all the political stuff in India and all the and like also even can, can we also talk about the um the use of the transgender characters in this oh, movie. Loved it, I was loved it. literally yeah. about to say that. Literally, as I was to say. Yeah, like when they show up in the club with their mask project. ready to kick ass. I was yeah. like, oh, I was like, oh, fuck yeah, dude. I was like, oh. yeah, let's go. And that's the thing I loved about it, uh, as opposed to John Wick, is that it wasn't just him doing this. Like he had a, like a family, like a you know, people behind him to support him and like help him out. And I fucking love that. And good on him for putting in transgender people into the film and making it a plot point and a strength as opposed to just like this side character. So good. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I was afraid that the moment that he woke up in the, um, in, 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 uh, in, I, f- I forget what they call, what they call it, but in the, the temple. temple. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to call it the temple. Sorry guys. If, if it's not that, but, um, but when he wakes up in the temple and they're kind of just sort of in the background for a little bit, but then you really start to see how they are intrinsic to his understanding of his defense and his, def- and his understanding of the fact that, you know, some of these people that they're ostracized from you, from, society and that you know in in a weird way he shares a lot more in common with them than he did with anybody in the first act of the movie Mm -hmm. and i just thought it was a really 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 well well told story about about just you know finding that inner peace in yourself with some of the outsiders in in society and can we also just talk about just uh, how entertaining it was to just watch him punch the bag and the guy? Oh yeah, the guy doing I, I the love that where he yeah. came was like silent, like Mayagi. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was sitting in the theater like bopping to that oh, drum. That's like a no, like, hey. It's like he was playing the drums, and I'm like, wait a minute, is he like trying to like show him like how to punch and like how many? I was like, okay, <laughs> I was like, punches. okay, with him. yeah, let's fucking go, dude. You know what I think is hilarious? I mean, <laughs> it was powerful. But hilarious, like when he gives him like that hallucinogenic drug or whatever to try to like rid him of his like guilt and anger, where we get to actually like see what happened to his mom and what happened to him and everything. You know, the whole oh. you know, like it, it's like and it'll then he teach like rips you. open his teeth. Oh, yeah, it's like you know, it's like, it'll it'll teach you before it leaves you that sort of thing. I, I I love that whole thing. I just think it's hilarious that this one scene is what Madam Web wanted to do. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. In exactly. that one scene where she goes back to like the village with the spiders and everything and they're like, you know, let me show you what really happened and this is the scene of like how it should be done and that was the scene of how it should not be done in Madam Web. Yep. So I just yeah. thought it was like it, like this is a great example of how to do like a tragic backstory right where like he shows you compelling bits and pieces early on and throughout and then when you finally get the full thing it's like really emotionally satisfying because you completely understand like what he's feeling, why he's feeling it and feeling that catharsis with him where before he goes into this, you know, action climax part of the film, you just feel amped with him. Like, okay, yeah, we've overcome this. Now let's go kick some fucking ass. And it feels earned. And that's what I really loved yeah. about that scene. That was a, a good point of taking its time of showing that. That was fine. That was a mm-hmm. part where I think the pacing worked to slow it down a little mm-hmm. bit. It was just mm-hmm. leading up until that scene, it definitely felt like we were screeching to a halt a little bit, especially for a movie that's only like two hours. It definitely felt longer. Yeah. 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 I agree. What was your favorite action like moment? I don't know. I, feel, I think the axe might be the moment. I don't, that was the moment yeah. where I was like, oh, this is dope. <laughs> I think for me, it was in the elevator where the guy has both his hands pinned, but the knife's already in his neck, so he like bites it. And, oh, like, that's a good yep. one. Yeah, that's Puts amazing. Oh, that was so, so cool. Good. That was yeah. so okay. fucking cool. I, 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 honestly, the second no, I, I take mine back, that was better. Yeah, that was better. I take mine back. Yeah. 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 Like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you. The elevator scene was probably my favorite. But Tom, I thought about you the second I came out of this movie because the the sec the the second we were outside, I was like, if I had to sum up this movie without spoiling anything to anybody, like I just immediately thought of Jim Carrey in uh, Ace Ventura. When he's like biting, I see. <laughs> like it's just like every single point or every single moment that you were like, oh god, he just started biting people. It's like. Biting, I see. 
<laughs> oh my god, so funny. No, it's like I feel like I, I feel like I thought of Ace of Turrets like when like the whole room is just like full of bodies, and I just thought it's like what a lovely room of death. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Jim Carrey oh. ties us all together. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, are there any other bits of the movie that you really like, especially enjoy that you haven't got a chance to talk about yet, or have you hit them all? I think I hit them. It's hard to say because I did see this several days ago, so you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not now. Long now there, but... Would you be opposed if, at some point, Dev Patel decided he wanted to make a sequel? Maybe I don't know. I feel like it was a good ending. I feel like we all s- assume he died. Uh, I don't know. They could pull a crank too. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Scoop him right up and get him taken care of. Uh, I think maybe let's just have him direct something else first, and maybe we shall revisit later on. I would just love to see him star in another action movie. I feel yeah. like this is, if anything, yeah. this is his audition Whoa. tape to be in tons more action movies. How many action, you know, stars are Indian out there? Like, let's fucking let's go. Fucking let's this go. eight pack. I think, <laughs> I think now here's the thing. I would love to see Dev Patel direct another thing, but I think with whatever his next project is, I I would be more interested to see what he would be able to do if he sort of wasn't the the lead, the lead role, because there's a thing where when you direct, it's so hard for you to direct and lead a movie at the same time, which is why I commend Dev Patel in this movie doing it right off the bat. But I would love to see a movie where his attention is completely focused on the other aspects of the movie and not necessarily his performance. Do you mean specifically of- an action movie? Because he's definitely been the yeah. lead in other movies. Okay. Yeah, an action movie in particular, because I, I, I want I want to see I want to see what he can do when he when he is solely focused on the directing, maybe directing another Indian actor as well, like something maybe something like that. Who knows? I mean, but I mean, am I opposed to seeing a sequel to this? I think because of the fact that I think the story only works if he dies at the end. But I would love to see him direct another movie. And if he wants to be a lead again, I, I would say direct himself as the lead. Go right ahead. Make more movies. But do what Jordan Peele did, where it's like, you know, you don't necessarily make a sequel to Get Out. You make Nope. Or you make, um, no, not Nope. You make Us going forward. Like, you know what I mean? Like, do yeah, something completely new. He did make Nope, right? Yeah, I, I just got the timeline. Like, you know, he, he, he could have done Get Out 2. He still did it. <laughs> yeah, he still did it, but he could have made a sequel to Get Out 2 at any point in time. I mean, again, that movie was such a massive yeah, success sure. pre-pandemic. So there you go. True. Yeah, well, yeah I'm, I'm on board with that. I just want to see him direct something else, whether it's an action movie or something in a different vein. That would be kind of cool. But yeah. I'm excited for his future as a director, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I will say the one thing in this movie I felt like they dropped the ball on, which is it was such a small moment, but he like gets all amped up, does this montage of getting fit, gonna go kill some people, and then he bleaches the monkey mask, and it looks so fucking cool. And he rolls up in his little yeah, like, and then he immediately gets rid of it. Fit. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. I was like, you but but you also have to th- one but, fighting but, sequence. But but you also have to think about it. It's like a, you want to show audiences that you're doing the stunts because if you put on the mask, immediately people are going to assume there's like a stunt double or something. And then two, right. it's insanely hard to see out of a monkey mask. Right. <laughs> yeah. And that's what I figured. But I would have at least like him to keep it on to kill the like guards that were outside and then take it off. I think that would have been more powerful. I mean, like he takes I mean, the I mask. Think- does it and then whoosh, done. I feel like it would have been cool if he wore it like briefly in the beginning, he takes it off, or whatever, but then like towards the end before he goes to like the the big boss or whatever, he comes back to the elevator, it's a little bit bloodied up or whatever, and he puts it back on, and then that's when he has yeah. his final showdown with the boss guy. Cause it looks yeah. so fucking sick. I love how we're trying to pitch it. the fucking end of these movies. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like, these are probably like the biggest trash ideas ever. Yeah. <laughs> he, just, he just looks so fucking sick. With yeah, I know. He looked dope. I think that's like, the problem. Yeah. He looked dope Suit? in the mask. Yeah. Which, so which, which, which I was about to say, um, probably one of my favorite scenes in the entire movie 
is when he takes all the money from the monastery and bets it on himself. And then, oh, then when, oh that was, I was literally about to say yeah. the where he just one oh, kicks he, it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that he, was just, he just knocks him out with one punch and then the bigger dude comes up and then it's even more of a dynamic action scene than we've ever seen it before. But it also feels like, again, the shaky cam works in the very beginning of the movie. And then to have the shaky cam, like almost phased out for that fi- for that um that shaky cam almost phased out for when he's wearing the mask and then you just start getting like all these like very weird like Dutch angles and you start getting all these like really dynamic camera movements as opposed to chaos like that that to me is like man I mean, Dev like like I I, I want to see you just only directing on this I want to see what what more action sequences you can come when you don't. When, when, when you don't have to put yourself in front of the camera. Like, you know what I mean? Sure. I mean, I'm sure we'll hear back from him at some point. <laughs> <laughs> but, but who knows? Maybe, maybe, maybe now he, maybe, maybe he learned certain things in this that he's like, you know what? I can make myself look even better on screen. So there yeah. you go. There you go. That was sick when you took that guy out with a win. Yeah, that was, that was that, a huge crowd moment in my theater. That happened. And the, and the, the yeah. cake. <laughs> cake. Is that what it's called? Andre C. would know. The which one? A claymore kick. It's a wrestling move. You just go like bang, to their face. Oh yeah, I, I think it's yeah, I think it's a claymore kick. It was amazing. God, loved it. And I love how the crowd in the in the movie was just like silent, <laughs> like oh fuck, what did we just see? Oh yeah, we didn't even mention Charlton like, Copley. I just love seeing him play wacky characters. Oh I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all he does play. But I like it. He's great. Yeah. <laughs> like, be a fucking monkey. Be a fucking monkey. <laughs> I, think Craig met him. I think Craig met him at WonderCon. He was like, oh, that's cool. Shit. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's well, Jen's idol right there. <laughs> there it is. But more importantly, guys, what are we giving this out of five pints? Well, I immediately text Con and Jindorian after I saw this movie and I said I gave it four out of five lady boners. But you know, that's probably not the scale we're going off of. I feel like that's a different scale. (laughs) (laughs) Not quite the scale we use. Uh, I I feel like I'm stuck between three and a half and four. I'll say three and a half. Three and a half. Three and a half. Three and a half. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Andres. Yeah, I think it's a very solid debut for Dev Patel as a director, and it's it shows he's more than capable of doing action. But while I love the live aspects about the movie, I feel like there is – I still feel like the, the, the amazing Dev Patel movie is still to come. But for this, this is a really, really, really solid debut. I really enjoyed the hell out of this movie. Really enjoyed what he had to say. Um, I would go three and a half as well. Three and a half pints. All right. Well, I'm going to go four. I'm going to take it a little bit step for, further. Mm-hmm. I did have my problems with it, but I think the entertainment value helped mitigate some of the problems I had with it because I was just having such a good time and I was so impressed with his directorial skills and what he was bringing to the table. I just think probably one of the best directorial debuts I've seen in quite some time and just, just I feel like a proud dad almost to him. <laughs> like, it's just mm-hmm. like, oh, it's like he finally made it. He finally yeah. is, you know, doing his thing and he's making his stamp and showing people what he's got. Um, So I'm really happy for him, and I think it's just a really great first film and just a kick-ass action movie that I hope a lot more people see. It's it's, it's really fun. But before we head on out today, we do want to start a new little segment here so that we're going to be talking about some movies that maybe we've seen for the first time or maybe some other movies that were released in theaters that we didn't get a chance to talk about this week because Monkey Man was the big release. So, you know, you guys both can take your turn. You can talk about maybe a movie that you caught for the first time that you've been meaning to see for a while or another movie that recently hit theaters that you got a chance to see and wanted to give some attention to. So hit us with it. We'll start with you, Andres. Anything you've seen lately for the first time or something you want to give attention to? Well, I will say I absolutely fucking loved Love Lies and Bleeding. That is probably good one. That is probably yeah. my I love number it. two favorite movie of the year so yeah, far. I think that's my number right. two right now. Yeah. Woo! What's number one? Dune. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> come on. Come on. As is written. As is written. Come on. <laughs> These are not babe. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> No, Je- Jen was literally about to say, oh, this is that guy. When, when all of a sudden, when he's done training and, in Monkey Man, when <laughs> he's done was. training, and then she just looked over at me and then she didn't say a single word. And I could already feel the giggles coming up. She's like, 
No, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, not going to make you laugh at this theater right now because she knew <laughs> I was going to If leave. you guys don't make that part of your vows in your wedding. I mean, come on. Listen, listen, you Love guys, it. you. Okay. You guys have to. You guys have to yell like, "Listen, I got you." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, when you guys go in for your first kiss, <laughs> we're gonna be listening on it. <laughs> we're gonna scream it. Just no, but like in unison, we're gonna scream it. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Oh my goodness! But yeah, no. Love lies and bleeding. Fantastic, fantastic movie. Um, oh goodness. Um, Kathy Baker and uh, Kirsten Stewart are freaking dynamite in this movie. Um, we, we, we all know someone who loves them, some Ed Harris, and this is probably about as menacing and terrifying of a performance that we've ever seen Ed Harris in years. And yeah, he's great. the movie has so much style. It's fantastic. It's can't recommend that movie enough. It is on, on the, on the pint scale. It is a four and a half out of five. Yeah. I can't wait to see what Katie O'Brien does as next as an actress. She was so good. In the movie. Mission Impossible. I know. I'm so amped. She's going to be perfect. Perfect. Yeah. How about you, Nancy? Yeah, so I finally saw One Love. I've been meaning to see it for a while now. Uh, I went back home for the weekend to go visit my parents, and they had actually seen the movie in theaters but could not understand a lot of it because of the <laughs> Subtitles. Yeah, so they were so excited to rewatch it with subtitles. And I thought it was really good. I see why a lot of people probably didn't like it because it wasn't a traditional you know, biopic where you're going through the whole life, you know, from a young age to where they become famous. And it really just is right when he's already famous. The movie really is more so on that social and political climate at the time and how he affected that, which I actually really love because Bob Marley is, you know, so much more than just a musician. All of his songs have a meaning and all of his songs either have to do with like religion, which I didn't know maybe I'm dumb. I didn't know Rastafarian was like a whole religion. I thought yeah. it was just like a lifestyle. Um, so I learned a lot about that. And yeah, it was great because my dad would always play me Bob Marley music when I was younger because he was a huge fan when he was in college. And um, so it was really fun to watch it with my parents. And but the whole time I was like, just cut off your damn toe. <laughs> like, it's just a toe. <laughs> you would still be here today. If you just maybe if you just cut off your toe. However, I did look into it. Apparently that is against the Rastafarian religion to like have an amputation done. So that's why he didn't agree to do that to stop the cancer from spreading. So I was like, okay, yeah, fine. But still, <laughs> wish maybe you would have cut in the toe so you could still be here, but okay, yeah. I respect it. <laughs> but overall I liked it. I would say three and a half stars for me. Pints, sorry. Stars. <laughs> Stick to the scale. Stick to the scale. <laughs> I, sorry. Um, for the movie that I saw like in the past couple weeks that I think I told Andres about because you know he's been trying to get me to watch this movie for a long time. It's not a movie that's in theaters right now, but it um, did recently come to 4K for the first time, and that's True Lies, which I had never seen with Arnold oh, Schwarzenegger okay. uh, and Jamie Lee Curtis. It's it had been on my list for a long time, and I finally was just like in the mood to just watch like a cheesy 90s action movie and have arnie in the lead and it was fun I, I i very much enjoyed it i think arnie's great i think jamie lee curtis is really awesome i think the action sequences are super fun even though you could definitely play a drinking game with how many times you can spot arnie's stunt double <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my oh, do god you know the, do you know the story about her when she's like stripping in the thing and she like falls uh, like she, uh no you know that so oh. she she actually falls that's not in the script and so when uh -huh. he gets up and does this, he was He's actually, actually concerned. going to go yeah. and get her. And he like realized they were still rolling. He's like, <laughs> like, but it actually works perfectly. Well. It's so good. <laughs> I was like, what a perfect accidental moment to keep in the film. So good. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, yeah. Jamie oh, yeah. Lee Curtis was a smoke show back in the day. Good for her. Mm -hmm. You know, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and like, and like, <laughs> there, there, like yeah. <laughs> and there, there, there was like, there was like an entire thing where like Cameron, like Cameron explained that, that uh, he wrote the role for Jamie Lee Curtis and then he brought it over to Arnold and Arnold's like, I don't think she can really necessarily pull it off with what the script requires her to do. And then, and then James Cameron just said, shut up, watch a fish call one and you'll see that she's got the comedic chops for it. And, and yeah. And then the rest is history. Like she's fantastic in that. That might be before, I mean, I mean, before freaking, um, you know, her comeback with, uh, with uh, everything, everywhere, all at once. 
Wait, what? <laughs> Well, <laughs> Come back with Freaky Friday. <laughs> oh my God, I love Freaky Friday. All right, I do too. I'm just saying, maybe not her comeback. But I do love that movie. <laughs> yeah, but but that is like probably one of her best performances that she's ever had. I think personally. So yeah, but my question, Tom. So you saw this on 4K, right? Yes. What did you think of that transfer? <laughs> it's uh, not great, um, but uh, <laughs> it has its moments. It's fine. It just kind yep. of sometimes looks a little bit like Madame Tussauds <laughs> Wax Museum. <laughs> yeah. Basically, yeah. basic, basically what, what me and Tom are talking about is for the 4K release, uh, James Cameron had this like new AI uh, VNR uh, transfer done. You mean DNR? Where, what? You mean DNR? DNR. I said VNR, didn't I? Yeah, DNR. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he had this new transfer done where it's basically – gets rid of all details in in the face and then it also like makes everything that's in the background um uh sharp as well so so there's no separation there's no depth perception in the movie and you're just like that looks so strange everything looks in focus like it looks i mean you've never seen arnie stunt double clear (laughs) yeah (laughs) from a far away shot too when 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 the oh, bad yeah. guy is in the in the in the front in the foreground and the art and the uh, the stunt doubles all the way in the back and you're like they didn't even try to hide it with the horse chase. <laughs> 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 oh my god! I was like they didn't even try. I was like okay, but luckily you know there's a lot more Arnie where that movie where yeah. that sequence kind of lacked it. But uh, you know it just makes me miss the days where James Cameron made movies other than Avatar. But you know I- I'm glad that. I'm glad that I saw it. It's a fun, dumb action movie. One of my favorite Bill Paxton performances for sure. Guy, oh, he plays like oh a, he, he plays a total piece of shit sleaze, and he's so good at it. Um, and his just, laugh, oh, his, his laugh, laugh is like, is like, ah! You're like, oh my god, please kill him. <laughs> yeah, just it's why it was weird. It's like the movie wasn't really working until he thought his wife was cheating on him. For me, like I just kind of felt like, okay, it's kind of like a typical spy movie, whatever. It's got Arnie, okay. And then as soon as he gets into like that insecure husband mode i was like okay i can get into this <laughs> I was like all right I, I like insecure arnie i'm digging this <laughs> yeah but yeah it, it was fun so i would give it three and a half out of five points i think it's got its problems but i think it's entertaining you know like it's it's not like a masterpiece or anything but i was very entertained hmm. cool. i saw your eyes go like you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, um, but yeah, but before we head on out, guys, you got to let them know where can the fine people find you on the interwebs? We'll go with Nancy first. You haven't been here in a bit. You got to remind people. P. Sorry, just <laughs> dancing in my head. Uh, yes, P L. Wait, what? P-L- oh, no, she doesn't P-L- remember. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get back into the flow of it. Okay, P L underscore band aid on Twitter and Instagram. And of course, you can find me here. And let's see. Oh, I also helped Jindoyan with his Cinemoji matches. Go and check that out. They're fantastic. All right. Andres? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram as Galagos. You can also find me on Letterboxd as Galagos. And then you can also find me helping our buddy Jindoyan um, edit these uh, little matches called uh, Cinemojis. And we have one premiering on Thursday. And it is... Uh, me and Jen as team departed going up against Nancy's brother, uh, Eric Rodriguez and, and, uh, video drew as well as a uh, team unmatched. So go check that out. And also you can find me here. All right. Uh, and you guys could find me on Twitter and Instagram at Tom Chattelbash. You could find me on Letterboxd at T Chattelbash. And you can find me on Facebook and YouTube at Chattelbash Reviews. I'm the only one out of the three of us that is apparently not helping Jindoyan with Cinemojis. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I have been on the show it. once, and that was fun. Yeah. I've been a competitor, yeah. so that's fun. But I'm sorry, yeah, Jindoyan. I guess go. if you need help, give me <laughs> ask me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but yeah, you, so you could find me there. And you know, thank you guys for tuning in to another brand new episode a film on tap where we hope you enjoyed it whether you listened to it or watched it and uh we're definitely happy to have nancy back in the fold her presence was missed uh and yeah just thank you for watching another fun new episode of film on tap where we've got the tap that never runs out we'll see you guys next time take care bye